Okay, hey guys, so for today's video, I kind of want to get into the basics a little bit. I Sometimes I just assume everybody knows everything. Even when I don't know everything, I just assume everyone else knows uh, sometimes what I'm talking about. So I kind of want to get into the basics. So uh, next week, I'm going to talk about how to build a routine. This week, I want to focus on different skin types and skin issues uh, that are worth considering when you figure out kind of your routine and what you're going to do. So I want to talk about different skin types, skin issues, uh, and different factors, and then Fitzpatrick skin types. So the first thing I want to talk about is how to determine your skin type. There's different skin types. There's also different skin issues and then other factors to consider. So typically different skin types include normal skin, oily skin, dry skin, combination skin, and then sometimes sensitive skin is con considered its own skin type. It's a little That one's a little controversial, but some people believe it, some people don't. There's additional factors to consider, such as rosacea-prone skin, eczema-prone skin, acne-prone skin types, and then uh, some people also believe in a fungal acne-prone skin type. That one also, controversial. I never thought when I got into reviewing stuff and talking about skincare that some things would be so controversial, but there is a lot of controversy with certain things. So read about it, come to your own conclusion. Don't listen to me, listen to what you think makes sense. Then there's other skin issues on top of that also to consider. Hyperpigmentation, melasma, uh, milia-prone skin, uh, acne-prone skin, some just additional factors, especially when you're thinking about how to start a routine and what products you need. Those are things worth considering. So typically, there's several different ways to determine your skin type. I think mo a lot of you probably know what it is uh, just from experience, but there's typically the main... Uh, the main uh, factor, the main test that a lot of companies use is the blotting test. So they say after washing your face with a mild cleanser, leave your skin bare for three hours. Don't apply anything. Don't do anything. Cleanse it gently and pat it dry and then let it sit. Uh, then after three hours, place a blotting paper. A lot of you with oily skin probably know what these are. They're little tissues that you can carry around. This one came from Jolsey. And uh, you just use one over your skin to... Usually they're used to like clear up oil or blot it off. I don't know. Do I? My skin's so dry, it probably doesn't matter. There's a little bit of oil on there, mostly from my forehead. So they recommend using the blotting paper over various of your various areas of your face for several minutes, and then see how oily it is. If the paper adheres, they also say if it adheres, like if it sticks on. There we go. If it sticks on. Uh, if it adheres and you notice patches of oil upon removal, uh, you likely have oily skin type. If the paper sticks but doesn't have any noticeably oily spots, your skin type is probably normal. And if it doesn't stick at all, you likely have dry skin. Um, I guess it sticks a little bit, but I'm wearing makeup, so that probably doesn't count. So those are a couple things, factors. Also, you notice if it sticks only in certain areas like the forehead or the nose or the chin area, it typically means you have combination skin. So if you have oily skin, a lot of you probably have already used these. I used to carry these around with me. And they didn't do a lot of good because my skin is probably super, it's super dry. It didn't really matter. But other friends love these things and still use them. So these were the only ones I could find that I own and they came to me free because they're from Jolsey and I, didn't, I don't really use them. So anyway, so that test can't help you determine if your skin is sensitive. But it can help you determine if it's normal, oily, dry, combination uh, things like that. So that's typically the most common test. Uh, so different skin types, normal skin, it's not dry nor oily. It's, uh, you know, typically has fine pores, smooth texture, good circulation. Um, dry skin typically shows an overall lack of hydration. It appears tight, thin, dull, sometimes rough. Uh, it can be caused by, for different reasons, impaired moisture barrier, environmental factors. I definitely know my skin in the winter in Minnesota, very dry and screaming at times with dryness. And then in the summer, it's happy. So sometimes just the environment makes a huge difference. Um, so that's something to consider. Oily skin is typically just caused from an overproduction of oil and skin. Oily skin typically ages a lot better than other skin types because when your skin's super hydrated, your skin doesn't crack or wrinkle or get rough. Um, so sometimes it's shiny or greasy, uh, so, and then oily skin types are typically more likely to be prone to acne due to clogging pores and things like that. Combination skin, it's just what it sounds like. Certain parts are dry, certain parts are oily. Typically the oily parts are in a T, 
your forehead down to your chin and the dry parts around your nose not your nose your cheeks so and around your eyes um, then com uh, sensitive skin it's just sensitive to certain fragrances ingredients uh, sometimes it's peely red redness um, and it can be caused by a fragile skin barrier sometimes it's genetics and sometimes it's uh, related to certain conditions such as again eczema or rosacea so um, anyway, so each skin type kind of requires its own way to care for it. Uh, somebody with excessively dry skin is not going to use the same thing as somebody with super oily, acne-prone skin. It just doesn't make sense. That's why there's probably millions of skin to ear products out there for different skin types. So um, normal skin, you just want to be gentle with it and use some good ingredients. In my opinion, vitamin C in the morning is great for all skin types. There's so many different types of vitamin C serums. Uh, some will work great for acne prone skin. There's certain derivatives such as sodium ascorbyl phosphate vitamin C that works great for acne prone skin. Well as 20% uh, alizorbic acid would be great for normal skin. Sensitive skin, you might want to go with something a little bit weaker, maybe 10% ascorbic acid. So things like that are worth considering. In my opinion, everyone needs sunscreen in the daytime. That is going to be your biggest, biggest thing to prevent aging, help your skin stay healthy, and avoid skin cancer. I had a friend that had uh, a melanoma around her eye removed. This was probably three years ago now and she's still doing treatments and things like that to help with the scarring and things like that. So if you can avoid it, it's much better. Prevention is better than, what do they say? Prevention is worth an ounce of cure or something. An ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. There you go. Is that it? That's something like that. Okay, so keep those, keep those in mind. Um, Okay, other skin types. So there's a Dr. Leslie Bauman came up with her own skin type measurement, which evaluates four different parameters. So uh, this means there's 16 different unique, unique skin types. So uh, the first parameter is dry versus oily. So if your skin is dry, you would be a D. That's me. Uh, then sensitive versus resistant. Is your skin sensitive to ingredients or is it pretty hardy? Mine would be sensitive. So I'm S, so DS. Pigmented versus non-pigmented. I definitely have hyperpigmentation and melasma. So mine would be pigmented. And then wrinkle prone versus tight. I'm not exactly certain how exactly. I guess if your skin is wrinkly, you would give it a W. If it's more tight, it would be a T. But a lot of times that goes with dry or oily skin. But my skin would be pretty tight, I think. So my unique skin type would be DSPT, which is kind of interesting. So everyone has their own unique factor. So... Um, anyway, okay, then last but not least, Fitzpatrick skin types. There's five different categories. There's If you Google Fitzpatrick skin types, you can get lots of um, information like this chart, which shows, uh, I didn't print it in color, but in color it's a little bit more helpful, different characterizations of each Fitzpatrick skin type. So um, anyway, so let's go through and I'll determine mine. It's been a while since I did this. Okay. Okay, so Fitzpatrick skin type 1 has the lightest skin color, the most sensitive to sun exposure. People with this skin type almost never tan, will develop painful sunburns that lead to blistering and peeling. Um, typically, it's people of Northern European descent and Scandinavians. Fitzpatrick skin type 2, light skin, less pale than type 1, slightly more sun resistant. Um, still susceptible to UV radiation, typically European or northern Northeast Asian ancestry. Fitzpatrick skin type 3, medium or pink or beige skin, moderately sensitive to UV radiation, although more susceptible to sunburn uh, than the higher types. Uh, typically, it's people of Mediterranean, Latin American, Middle Eastern, and Native American uh, origin. Fitzpatrick skin type 4, uh, Oliver light brown skin, mildly sensitive to UV radiation, relatively unlikely to burn. It's typically people of East Asian, South Asian, African, Latin American, Middle Eastern, or Native American ancestry. Fitzpatrick skin type 5, uh, people with brown skin that tan readily and profusely, strongly resistant to sunburn. Typically African, Latin American, Middle Eastern, Austronesian, Australian, or Aboriginal. Aboriginal, there we go, or Southern, South, A South A Asian ancestry, <laughs> sorry. And then last but not least, Fitzpatrick skin type 6, very dark brown skin, little sensitivity to UV radiation, almost never gets burnt. 
Uh, still at risk of developing skin cancer. They're typically African, Austronesian, uh, Australian or Aboriginal. God, why do I keep screwing that one up? Or South Asian, Asian descent. So a lot of these factors, they also go by skin color or eye color. So typically uh, the first question, eye color, light. Zero, blue, gray, or green is one. Dark is two. Brown is three. That would be me. Do you turn brown? Never sell them, sometimes, always, often. Uh, I would say sell them. Natural hair color, red, blonde. Yeah, people with red hair definitely need sunscreen. Blonde, chestnut or dark blonde, brown or black, I'd say I'm brown. How brown do you get? Uh, never light tan, medium tan, dark tan, or deep tan. I would say light tan. It's been so long. Um, is your face sensitive to the sun? Sensitive, very sensitive, sensitive, sometimes resistant or never have a problem. I would say sensitive. Your skin color, unexposed areas, reddish, pale, beige, brown, dark brown, I'd say I'm pale. Freckles on unexposed areas. I have several, I would say. How often do you tan? Never, well, they mean you go tanning or how often you tan? Sell them, I would say. Do you stay in the, if you stay in the sun too long, do you have painful blisters peeling, mild blisters peeling, burn, mild peeling, rare, no burning? I would say mild blisters and peeling. And then when was your last tan? When was my last tan? I would say 2000. 2004, uh, plus three months ago, I would say. So then you add these all up. So we got three plus three is six plus one is seven. Plus 1 is 8, plus 1 is 9, plus 1 is 10, 11, 12, 13. So my score would be 13, so that put me at skin type 2. I will link to this one below because I think it's interesting. So uh, so I'm just barely in the skin type 2. Always burns, easily tans, minimally white skin. That's me. So there you go. So I'll link to this below. So anyway, kind of interesting things to consider and uh, I'll explore more things and how to develop a routine and things like that. I talk a lot about products, but let's get more into other topics like how to even start, where you begin. So um, anyway, interested hearing from you guys if you have any thoughts. Otherwise, I will see you tomorrow, and thanks so much. Bye, guys.